Hey, it's Brian, one half of Bring Me the Axe podcast. Uh, and I wanted to show you something because, um, you know, I'm just trying a little something different here and uh, give you a little sense of what I am into and what I'm about. Uh, you'll notice that behind me, you see the general disorder of my house. You know, I'm not one of these people who has a whole shitload of Blu-rays and DVDs and God help you with video cassette for some reason. Uh, you know, I was a collector for a really long time and, you know, space becomes an issue when you start to actually add more people to your house, such in the way as to do is when you have children. So uh, you'll never really see me standing in front of like a wall of stuff like, uh, like you see a lot of other like horror and movie YouTubers doing. Um, not that I intend to be a YouTuber or anything like that, but I do have a few things that I think you'll find interesting and I don't know, maybe it's something you want to check out. So I figured I would kick this off with probably the crown jewel of what I actually have left of my old DVD collection. Uh, I've since kicked uh, a lot of that stuff loose. But I did keep a few uh, handy because they've got sentimental value to me. They actually have, like, signatures on them and shit. So uh, I was going to start this off with Dawn of the Dead. So, yes, this was uh, this is the, the uh, Anchor Bay release from, I believe, like, 2004 or 2005. Uh, it's the ultimate edition they touted it as. And this was back in the time when everybody had to have every available version of Dawn of the Dead because there's, like, several of them, as it turned out. You know, and those of us who kind of go back into the 80s and the 90s and we were collecting uh, videotape bootlegs, you know, you know, everybody who traded tapes had a tendency to have a shitload of versions of Dawn of the Dead. And I was one of those people. I had, I believe, every version that appears in this in this box set. And that is, we've got the version that was released theatrically. It was the stuff that went off to videotape eventually and kind of find its way back onto the ordinary releases in Blu-ray and DVD. Uh, but this one also has a uh, cut from Italy, the sort of Dario Argento cut. I don't really watch it. It's a little shorter. They say it's a little more punchy. It's got a little bit more action to it. Uh, I'm not really I'm not really sold on it. The one that I always really wanted it for, the one that I really sort of coveted it for, was the sort of special edition version, which is a composite of all the available uh, Dawn of the Dead cuts out there. It was much longer, and uh, in theory, that's wonderful. You know, you get to see everything, and if you're a big fan of the movie, such as I am, you really want to see everything. You're a completist. You really, you really want to know everything there is to know about it. And then, you know, I watched it, and I realized this movie is really way too long. Like, I'm very surprised by uh, how much of a slog it actually feels. The theatrical cut was pretty much perfect, it turns out. But, you know, this is a DVD set that came with, uh, it came with all of those versions. I'm going to show them to you right here. It's a really, really nice little box set. Um, that they, I'm sure that they've since re-released in, in various versions. Uh, I'm sure there's a Blu-ray. There must God, probably a 4K at this version at this time. I haven't really thought to check since I've only recently started buying physical media again. But uh, yeah, so we've got uh, the original theatrical cut. And the reason I show you this is because it is signed by Ken Faree. And uh, there used to be there used to be a horror convention that came out around us uh, back in uh, you know around the time that this was released. I believe that the very first one that they did coincided with the release of this of this box set. It also came out at the time that the the Snyder version of Dawn of the Dead came out. So Dawn of the Dead was very much on everybody's mind. And so at that very first Rock and Shock that they had, it was in uh, Worcester, Massachusetts. Um, they had the complete cast except for uh except for one of them david M. Yee, i think is the only one i don't have but that's the theatrical version of ken he was a very very nice guy if you've ever gone out to any of these conventions he's usually there with his own table he's a very warm very friendly guy when i saw him you know it was the first time i'd ever actually really seen anybody i've got tales of meeting my my horror movie heroes in the past and most of them are not good stories and so i was very nervous to sort of step into this and actually do that again uh but he was the first one that I saw, and I kind of freaked out. I, t I don't usually get starstruck by this, but this is a person you see in a lot of movies that I've been watching. You know, He's in everything. He's in Leatherface, and he's in you know, Dawn of the Dead, and he's in all the more recent stuff. You know, Rob Zombie's been keeping him pretty busy for years. Uh, so, yeah, he was, uh, he was a very warm, very friendly guy. We c conversed for a little bit, and um, I don't know what a going signature autograph photograph opportunity for Ken goes for these days. But back then that cost $10, which uh, was kind of amazing to me. It seemed a little too good to be true, but uh, yeah. So we've also got the extended version, which comes with 
Galen Ross, who made sure that just in case I didn't know who she played, she put Fran on it. Um, and she was also wonderful, very warm. All of these people were, you know, I, I really, I really enjoyed it. So we got the European version as well from the same signing, same thing, you know, Scott Reiniger, who again, <laughs> to put the little, little name on there, just in case you don't know who he played, but yeah, and he was also warm, super sweet. Uh, of uh, just a stand-up guy, and uh, there's also the last disc in the set was a documentaries disc, and I had that uh, I had that saved for David, but he was not available at the time. I think he was supposed to be, but he just didn't. He just wasn't available at the time. I think he might have been sick or something like that. But really, the one thing about this that really kind of sets it out and pu- it puts it aside for me is, in uh, a couple of years before he uh, before he died, I actually got to meet George himself. And uh, he was, again, a delightful man. He was wonderful. He was warm. There was a line out the fucking door for him. And uh, uh, I, was, I was surprised that, you know, he spared the time for me that he did. Because when you get into these sort of situations, if you've ever been to one of these things, you are aware. Like, you're, you're giving these people your money, and they're giving you their time. But at the same time, at least for me, in the back of my head, I'm like, there's like... 50 people standing behind me who also want some of this guy's time. So I don't want to, I don't want to hold him up too long, but George talked to me for quite a while uh, about and answered all of my questions very patiently and even humored me when I think I was probably the only person in the place who didn't want to talk about zombies because, uh, you know, it may surprise you to know that my favorite uh, Romero movie is not one of the zombie movies. It's actually Martin. And so we talked about Martin for quite a while and uh, it was, it was very nice. He was a very, very warm, uh, uh, very approachable gentleman. And uh, this is actually the second, no, this is the first version that I've owned of this, but I've actually owned two of them. And the second one I only owned for, you know, a brief period of time. So it was actually set out, uh, set aside for uh, for a charity event that we were doing uh, back when I was still doing Cinema Suicide. And we actually, I bought another one of these these sets used on, Am- on Amazon. It came on and it was like perfect condition. It was basically, you know, somebody had basically taken the plastic off of it. And that was about the extent of its use. But we wanted to have it auctioned for charity and we wanted it to be something special. So I actually called his agent at the time in Canada and I said, I, you know, I just introduced myself. I told him what I wanted to do. And he was like, hell yeah, just send it up there. And I was like, should I send a box to have it sent back? He's like, no, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll, we'll handle this. And so, yeah, we had something like two weeks to get this thing done. I said, you know, I, sh- I probably should have done this sooner. Um, so if you guys could, you know, expedite this, it'd be great. And I, I sent it up and like a week later, I had a, a signed copy of it from from George. So, you know, he was a he was a really he was a really good guy, you know, and he really went out of his way to sort of like treat uh, treat the fans. He was a guy who really uh, understood what these movies mean to people. And that goes a long way because I've also had encounters with with people that in these same conventions uh, who left a real bad taste in my mouth. And, uh, you know, I, I might get around to those eventually because I do have those those signed DVDs still as well. So, uh, yeah. Like and subscribe. You know, there's going to be more of this stuff coming in. You know, we'll, we'll put more uh, previews of upcoming episodes of the podcast uh, as well. So stick with me. Thanks for watching.